Yeah, I'll always be a metalhead. They, nothing can take that away from me. Right. I mean, not jail, not people, not religion, not anything. I'll always be a metalhead. Metalhead, metalhead, metalhead. Metalhead, in my life. You're listening to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. Welcome, Metalheads, to another episode of the Great Metal Debate Podcast. It's your guy Xander yet again with another album review. Dissecting another black metal corpse on the autopsy table, today we have a band called Cavalier Mort with their newest album, Vizio and Sanis, which was released on May 6th. Sorry I'm just now getting around to this somewhat late review, but better late than never. These guys hail from the UK and are once again proving up is far superior to it when it comes to the genre. When it comes down to any style of black metal, the medieval countries always kick our Yankee asses. Tableau Mort is a band in England, and they have done more than grab my attention. I remember seeing the album cover for the band's debut full-length, Bill Book One, a few years back, but I never checked it out. Now with their sophomore release, they have done nothing but impress me. I would once again like to thank Black Metal Promotion for introducing me to this glorious music. The album begins with the spooky atmospheric sounds along with the sound of a baby crying. Sure, that might be slightly generic, but the rest of the album more than makes up for it. The first track is of course titled Metamorphosis. One thing I noticed right away was the vocals. James Andrews has the same higher pitch screams as someone in a new age downtuned deathcore band but it still has enough raspiness to qualify as a black metalist. The winding guitar riff of Idolatry, the next track, is a clever way of making sure people remember the song's intro. There is an odd sound that occurs in this song that sounds like a distant choir. You can slightly hear it in the background as it changes to what sounds like Mongolian throat singing or chanting monks. It lingers throughout the remainder of the song, but isn't overpowering in the mix. It's a very nice addition, to an already standout black metal track. Up next, we have the album title track, Visio and Somnus. It begins with a calm and soothing musical start before a black metal screech rips your eardrum. It's a warm welcome that is accompanied by yet another fantastic guitar riff played by George Topor. He continues to bring in a solid rhythmic style as the album progresses. Let's take a moment to appreciate the drum work on this absolutely stellar recording. It's not another disappointing cluster of blast beats like you get with other generic black metal bands. George Bladosen keeps a steady pace on his kit and makes it all come together with a wonderful tune. Blood Echoes follows after, and I must point out how I noticed the bass guitar supporting the main riff. Merrick Bethesda does a phenomenal job of making sure that the lead guitarist, Christian Garagu, has that crisp reverb. The first minute of the song, Hope Ablaze, sounds like a cross between the beginning of the song, Sworn to the Dark by Watain, and the beginning of Vortex of Negativity by Nagalfar. However, it uniquely blends into his bit that could be a, a great choice for a future music video. That is something I would definitely want to see. Their throats are open graves, kicks things off, and some all 10-second solo. By the second mark, the rest of the band joins in to give us a fucking powerhouse of a song, and it's one of my favorites on this record. Every member of the band doesn't pull any punches when it comes to this particular act. Everyone is on point and totally nailed this masterpiece Bolivian. Between the vocal aim and his lungs out, the drummer going as fast as he can, and the guitarist providing us with a nice little solo, it's not hard to see why I can get so much enjoyment out of it. The track ends with a haunting fiddle sound, which is an awesome way to conclude it. The Fire, The Star is what I would call the best example of modern rock metal song. Candle in the Darkness is the grand finale. The sweet picking of the guitars in this song is what grabs my attention, along with the rhythmic-sounding chugs of the other guitarist. The drum speed tends to happen in intervals on this track. It will fluctuate from a moderate pace to blast beats and continue back and forth like this, constantly going slow, then fast, slow, then fast. This song also has a brief finger-tapping guitar solo that matches well with this great song. It's the perfect song to close an album of this scale. Now, if I were to give this album a score, I would definitely rate it no lower than an 8 out of 10. Feel free to show this band some love by buying their music from their Bandcamp page. 